and huge Fulham fan, uh, Richard Osmond, joins us in the studio. Richard, good to see you. Hello, gents. How are you? Thanks very, very good, much for yeah. coming in. We oh, do appreciate pleasure. you. The, uh, how long has the show been going for now? Oh, good. It's been going for about three and a half years, four years. It started out very, very low-key on BBC Two at sort of 4.30 for a couple of series and then uh, they put it on BBC One we thought well that's the end of us now because <laughs> people are going to you know people are actually going to watch it and find out quite how inept it is but uh, that built and built and yeah, now they put it on Saturday nights as well so it's uh, <laughs> wherever they put it it seems to do alright the, the celebrity, celebrity yeah. that's right the spin-off the celebrity spin-off yeah. has done very well for the Beam on Saturday night it's amazing it gets sort of 6-7 million viewers for it's uh, I, mean, I have no comment on it I find it extraordinary but <laughs> I'm very glad people watch it I think in this era of cruelty one of the things that appeals about the show is that both of you are incredibly nice and genuinely nice to the contestants. It's, it's a sort of it's refreshing. Well, I hope so. It's very hard going on a quiz show. It's very hard doing anything like that. And those people are in front of lights. They're there for the first time ever. So you know their brains freeze. They say, you know, it's so lovely for them to come on in the first place. Why, why be mean to them? I'd be horrible with them, of course. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, that's just me. And we do like some of the, the nutty answers. There was one the other week where uh, I think it was a Scottish singer who, who basically did. My old man's a dustman, and the bloke said Bob Dylan. And you think, oh, come on, mate. <laughs> yeah, he said, I'm not certain he's Scottish, but I'm going to say Bob Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> Although my favourite was kind of a joke, but it was a brilliant answer. The guy who couldn't remember um, William Shakespeare's other half, and he said, Well, man hath a way. Man hath a way. Four marks for improvisation. Do you have a favourite? Uh, I, I know once we did uh, his name, any. Labour cabinet minister, so anyone who'd been a cabinet minister during uh, Tony Blair's reign, and there's a pair of them. The first one said, I'm going to go for Kenneth Clark, and then the second one said, oh, I'm going to go for Boris Johnson. <laughs> you know, there's a quite. couple of problems there. <laughs> yeah, slightly. How, how did the show come out? Who, who invented it? Well, we got, I mean, I work at, at Endemol. We're behind all sorts of things, Deal or No Deal and Total Wipeout. Mm. We've got a big team there who come up with things, and uh, so it was me and a group of people and we pitched it to the BBC and when you do that the producers always play the roles of the host mm, yeah. you know when you do a quiz it's quite complicated <clears throat> so you have to show mm. how it works so one of the producers was host I played the co-host uh, and at the end they said oh we, we need someone like you to be that person and then they said well how about you, you're really like you yeah, yeah. how about you would do it and uh, they, they assumed I would say no but I, I said yes immediately <laughs> <laughs> and without had you secretly like thought had you secretly thought this is my gig no one's going to do this better than me <laughs> I don't know you know what? I've worked behind the scenes on telly for so long you work with so many brilliant people don't you so many people who can do a great job and with that role which is just reading out some facts about stuff I thought I could probably do that. I could probably get away with that. <laughs> Your relationship is kind of pretty key to it. And I said him recently was seeing just, you know, not a lot, not so it gets in the way of the game at all, but a little bit more of you two and the kind of banter between you guys, which works very well. Well, we got, we've known each other for years. Mm -hmm. We've known each other since we were about 18. Zandra and I hadn't worked mm. together until until we'd done this, strangely enough. Uh, and you know, you spend a lot of time together when you're making a quiz like that because you record an awful lot of them. And you, you you would go mental if you weren't allowed just to make each other laugh and have a bit of fun with it. I think it wouldn't be the first choice for a game show. I mean, unless it, would he would he be, did you the fact you knew him, you probably went to him with the idea. But I mean, if somebody had gone to him cold, he would think, do I really want to do a sort of tea time game show? Well, the thing is, is, is Zandra will turn his hand to anything. It's mm. the truth. You know, he loves he loves being on telly and being entertaining. And he had. He had auditioned for Countdown okay, really, about really? a year beforehand, and the BBC said, no, we're not, we're not going to let you do it. So we knew that he was interested in doing, a, you know, that he would do a daytime show if it was fun and a good laugh and that kind of stuff. And so we went to him, and he was immediately interested, and then he found it was me, we're mates, so, mm. uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a fait accompli. What type of people do they get? You know, this hundred people who get a hundred seconds. I mean, presumably they are a, a complete cross-section. It's an absolute, so it's a random selection online, yeah, all ages from up and down the country. Because people always say, can I be one of the hundred? People, fans of the show always say, can I be one of the hundred? Mm. And the problem is if you can't be, because if, if, if the hundred were full of pointless fans, then they'd know everything. And suddenly there wouldn't be any pointless answers anymore. Of course. So it's absolutely um, anonymous and, uh, and a, a, a broad cross-section. You're probably aware of the secondary game that people play, uh, which is th the percentage of people you think would have come up with that answer. It's almost like mm -hmm. it's a game within a game. So you, sit, you will sit there and watch you say, I reckon oh, about 40% are going to say that. So you've got a kind of second strand going on. At the same yeah, there's time. also a third strand, which is a lot of students play drinking games to it as well. Oh, I'm yes, aware yeah. of that. Mm. Every time Zander says, uh, very well done, 
you take a shot every time I say, well done, if you got that at home, you take a shot. Yeah. They're, uh, we, we do that ourselves in the studio as well. <laughs> that works, because I, yesterday I got one, uh, a pointless answer, and, uh, I did, when you said, well done, if you got that at home, and I did feel <laughs> quietly pleased with we, myself. We were very delighted. I had a little smug grin on my face. <laughs> yeah, I do mean that. I genuinely mean it. If there's a good answer there and you're someone good, I think they should be applauded. It's like scoring a good goal. <laughs> as, as a Fulham fan, you may appreciate this uh, line I came up with yesterday, given that Chelsea <laughs> were talking about Avram Grant, and I said Abramovich should actually make Alexander Armstrong the manager because the whole season's pointless. There yes, you indeed. There you go. But uh, that brings us on to Fulham, and uh, you are a regular there, aren't you? I'm a season ticket holder. Yeah. Mm. How, when was when did you start going? Well, season ticket. I've only had been a season ticket holder for about the last four or five years. Yeah. So you know, I started uh, going every game when 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 Hodgson was in charge. But it's such a lovely place down there. Mm. You know what? A lovely atmosphere, a lovely club, um, and you know, we were there on Saturday <laughs> losing, losing rather horrendously to Spurs. Mm. So well done. Uh, <laughs> and you know, I was there with a couple of Spurs fans, and the atmosphere is lovely, and they're allowed to cheer, and no one might. You know, it's just as how football should be. There's like. a neutral section, isn't that there? Is there, there, there is that a makes it section. unique. It does. Yeah. So even even mm. in, in the Fulham sections, a, a, a lot of it can be quite neutral at times, <laughs> I have to say. Mm. That was an odd game, though, because there wasn't a lot in it until Tottenham I, I, I think exactly that. I, you know what? I was absolutely gutted. You know one of those games when you walk away, you think, How, we've lost 3-0. Mm. How has that happened? And we haven't won for six games as well. We could have really done with a little break. And, um, yeah, it was, uh, I wasn't in a good mood walking home. Martin Yore was a great appointment, I think, and uh, I also happen to know, uh, on a personal level, the, the, the chief scout there, and he, he's done a brilliant job. Some of the players he's found and brought in and either moved on or have gone on to develop in the team, and they have to do that at Fulham, don't they? I think it's exactly right. I think it's a really genuinely well-run club. Uh, I think it's run the way clubs should be run. I think uh, Yarl is a wonderful manager. He's got lots of youngsters there. He's got Fry, people like that. He's got uh, Katja Nitschlich, uh, who I know came from Liverpool. But, you know, he's got those guys, and he plays them, and it's just that they, I think they just run the club in the right way. The chief executive is very smart. You know, every way you look at Fulham, they're, they're smart people making smart decisions. And you've just got to look at Chelsea and you think it's done so differently. Absolutely. I, as yeah, a Chelsea fan, I can't disagree yeah, yeah, with that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you look at Berbatov for five million oh, and you compare it to Torres for 50 million. You see, was no, and it comes down to that. It comes down to, like, the guys at Newcastle, Graham Carr is so brilliant mm. as well, uh, and Barry Simmons at Fulham. These guys that can spot a player and don't have to. <clears> you wonder why Abramovich doesn't sign somebody like that rather than somebody who says, oh, I'll tell you what, I can spend 50 million for you on well, somebody. Exactly right. I mean, you know, you know, who it, couldn't do that? Any of, yeah, any of us can go in and tell you who to spend 50 million quid on. It's, it's somebody who can tell you who to spend £2 million on, and mm. somebody can tell you to spend £600,000 on, that's the guy you want. If you, Graham Carr would be the greatest signing Chelsea ever made, wouldn't he? I think so. I mean, <laughs> we saw that guy last night, what was his name, the, the guy that scored the goal, uh, I wrote it down. Bigger, bigger, bigger Romana. Yeah, I, um, did it. I managed it. Bigger Romana. Bigger Romana. Uh, he's from Burundi, isn't he? Is that right? That's right. Burundi? Absolutely right. Yeah. The, the Opta stat saying the uh, 87th uh, different nationality to score a Premier League goal. Is what tremendously right? interesting. Well, well, well done. You well done if you knew that. You do realise that Opta <laughs> has ruined your personality. <laughs> he really has. Yeah, see, that would be a great pointless question, though. It yeah. would. Be. And Burundi would be a pointless answer as well. That's another subject, actually. Who comes up with all the questions? Uh, we've got a big team of people because uh, there's a huge amount of questions on mm. the show. So a big team of people, all of whom have been on Mastermind and all those big shows as well. They're super smart, mm. and you know they come up with stuff, and then the producers go through them and work. Out. I mean, it's quite tough to have those questions. They've got to be proper lists and what have you. But uh, yeah, if, if if there are any absolute geeks out there looking for the perfect job that would be sitting in a room with these guys. <laughs> I think the niceness of the show, the, the appealing thing I was talking about before, is also seen in the fact that you, you get more than one chance, don't you? You that's can right. go on and not win, and then you're mm. invited back, which I think, how many times are they allowed to come back? They come back twice, and that's exactly right. Unless they get so to the final. And mm, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. It's yeah. so easy to get knocked out. If you don't know anything about sport and World Cup winners comes up, you're out. And mm. if you don't know anything about it, we had a 94-year-old guy on the other day, and wow. uh, it was the oldest person we've ever had, and uh, he had to name Britney Spears' top 40 hits. And, you know, <laughs> difficult for him. But he got, he got the chance to come back and then the first round on the next one was Will Smith films you think oh man <laughs> yeah, and he yeah. absolutely just trotted one out got through it was fantastic brilliant I love it the fact that you people limp their way to the final it's like a, a kind of spawny cut run at times if someone comes in you think well they're not going to last five minutes you know first question they get a hundred points they get a hope and you think and then the next thing you know, they've won the final you do occasionally get people on you think God, you've, yeah, you've had a pretty easy route through there. You haven't played yeah. any premiership teams on your way <laughs> no, through there. Exactly. Now, people not, because they only see you sitting down, they may yeah. not realise, I mean, I, I was struck immediately, you are a pretty tall, big I'm a, guy. I'm, I'm, a t I'm, I'm Breda Hangerland sized. You yeah. are? Yeah. And yeah. did you play sport? I mean, uh, rugby, no, football, I was, cricket, I was or anything? terrible. Like? I used to play rugby, but obviously I was in the second row, which is awful. I used to play basketball, but you didn't really play basketball when we were kids. Uh, so, and I'm terrible at sport. I love it. I'll watch anything all day, <laughs> you know. But the only sports I'm good at are 
pool and darts, really. <laughs> what about great. a sporting pointless special? We've said the celebrity show's going very well, and we've mm. seen sort of sporting football versions of things like The Weakest Link, so mm. that might be quite nice to get some players in at some point. No, exactly right. I mean, we, we, we have had the odd, mm. it's usually pundits who come on. We've had mm. yeah, Lawrence and, and, and Hanson, we've had all sorts of people like that. And uh, I was uh, had dinner with Rob Green last night, and he's desperate to come on. So we're going to get Rob on. Uh, Clark Collier wants to come on. So lots of sporting people like to do it, because people who like sport, the yeah. truth is, like lists. Yes, that's you know, true. They like lists of facts that's mm. what they're like and they're brilliant you know as soon as you if you do a, an end game that's 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 you know winners of the masters or winners of you know runners up in the world cup we did the other day you just see a sports fan's eyes light up because they know every single answer <laughs> it's good. so the good news is um there's lots more to come there's no kind of seeming end to uh, the, the regular series and, and i'll take it because it's rating so well lots more the, the uh, celebrity oh, show doing today. hundreds we're in, <laughs> we're in the middle now of doing uh, 183 new episodes uh, which it takes a while and yeah, we do. I think twenty or celeb ones which will go out on there on Saturday nights. So it's gonna it's gonna take up some of our time for a little while to is, come. Is there a board game or a video game? Well, there is a book, isn't there? Yeah, no, there's a book. Mention yeah, the book. We, we we wrote a book uh, over the summer, which hopefully is, is quite it's the hundred most pointless things in the world. It's just Sandra and I writing stuff about things that are pointless. Uh, very few of them sporting related. The first one is cushions on beds, for example. So it's just things about you know <laughs> yeah. just stuff you just think. Well, I mean, what's the point? Yeah. But really, what's the point? You've got to take them off before you go to bed and put them back on again <laughs> it's in the morning. Very true. Um, um, uh, so yeah, we've written that in the shops at the moment. We've done we've book signings and stuff, which is the weirdest thing in the world. <laughs> uh, but they've been uh, they've been fun. One sporting thing is that we did shouting at players on the telly as a pointless, and we've written a thing about that because that's just <laughs> it certainly is. It get, kind of gets it's cathartic though, isn't it? I mean, it doesn't actually make any difference. Applauding as well, on. applauding great things when yeah. you're sitting at home and telling people. Yeah. Sometimes you are moved to do that, but then you think, why am I doing this? Yeah. And there's, there's no if all the energy all. taken in by people <laughs> sitting in armchairs shouting at Stuart Downing, you could, you could power <laughs> the national grid. We probably could. <laughs> so, but any any other spin-offs likely to happen? Could there be? There's a, a board game. Other board, board game yeah. in, in the shots of Christmas. All that you know, all Ooh, the I'd usual. That. That's good. All the usual stuff. But the book, I think, is actually quite good. I would say it's not a cash in the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the other is. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't no, sort it. I sort of hinted at that book. People want it. Brilliant. Uh, Richard, lovely to see you. Oh, Thanks again pleasure. for coming in. Thank you. Um, you can catch Richard, of course, this afternoon at 5.15 and, uh, and for the foreseeable future alongside Alexander Armstrong on uh, Pointless and more of those uh, celebrity ones to come as well. But it's approaching 2 o'clock. It talks to me and Jacobs here on TalkSport. Lots more to come with us in the next hour.